Hello and welcome. In this lesson, I'm going to share with you 15 words that you are probably pronouncing incorrectly. And of course, I'll also teach you the right way to say these words. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Here is word number one. How do you say it? The correct pronunciation is poem. Po, um, poem. Now some people say poem, but that's not a standard pronunciation. The correct way to say it is poem. Now poems in general, as a form of literature, are called poetry. Po, a, tree, poetry. The next word is this vegetable. Now this is not an onion, it's an onion. Un, yen, onion. Number three is another vegetable, the tomato. Actually, that's the American pronunciation. The British pronunciation is tomato. Now in the pronunciation symbols on the screen, AME means American English and BRE means British English. Now the American and British pronunciations of this word are mostly the same. There are three syllables in each, but it's that middle syllable that Americans and Brits disagree on. For Americans, that syllable is may, tomato. And for Brits, it's ma, tomato. Tomato, tomato. Now we've talked about a couple of vegetables, but are you saying the word vegetable itself correctly? It's vegetable. It's not vegetable. And there's no table in it. It's vegetable, vegetable. I hope that onions and tomatoes aren't the only vegetables you eat because doctors recommend that we include a variety of fruits and vegetables in our diet. Did you notice how I said that word? It's variety. v ri a t with the stress on the second syllable, ri. So it's variety. The next word is mountain. I sometimes hear my English students say mountain, but that second syllable is ton. Maybe because it takes a ton of work to climb to the top of a mountain. So once again, the word is mountain. If you do get to the top of a mountain, you might find somebody sitting there meditating peacefully in that calm and serene atmosphere. That person might be a monk. Not a monk, but a monk with an uh sound. Monk. Next up is this word. How would you say it? Well, there are actually two versions of this word. The more common version is a verb, and it means that you were doing some activity, but then you stopped it, and now you're starting that activity again. And it's pronounced resume. Re-zoom, like when you zoom your camera lens. Resume. Now that's the American pronunciation. The British pronunciation is slightly different. Resume. 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 So American resume. British resume. The second version of this word refers to a document that has your qualifications, your work history, etc. on it. And it's something that you might give to an interviewer when you're looking for a job. This version is spelled with accents, those little slant lines above the E's, and it's pronounced resume in American English. re z me resume. In British English, it's pronounced resume. re zu me resume. So American resume and British resume. Number nine is another type of document, certificate. I sometimes hear students mispronounce this word as certificate. But your name doesn't have to be Kate for you to get a certificate. Now that's a terrible joke, but just remember that that last syllable is kit. Sir, T, fee, kit. With the stress on the second syllable, T. Certificate. Number 10 is data. Now this word basically just means information especially information that's used to make calculations. But there's some debate about the correct pronunciation because there are three ways that people say this word. 
data, which is the way that I said it, data, and even data. But the most common pronunciation is data, and that's how I recommend you say this word. Once again, data. The next word is cupboard. It refers to a piece of furniture with doors and shelves that's used to store things like clothes. Now, this is not a cupboard. I know it's spelled like that, but it's pronounced cupboard. Cupboard, cupboard. If you're more into British English, you can drop the R and say cupboard. Number 12 is this word. It's an adjective and it means that something is easily broken like glass. You often see that sticker on shipping boxes to say that the package needs to be handled with care. So how would you pronounce the word? In American English, it's pronounced fragile. fra -gil, fragile. In British English, the second syllable is gile, fragile. So American, fragile, and British, fragile. Next up is determine. This is not determine. There's no mine here. It's determine with a stress on the second syllable, ter. So determine. Once again, determine. What about when a situation is a total mess and you just can't determine what's going on? Well, you can use this word to describe it. It means a state of total confusion and it's pronounced chaos. K, like the letter K, and os, chaos. And our last word is niche, or is it niche? Well, this word refers to a small space in a wall where you can put things like statues, but it can also mean a comfortable job or business for a person. The traditional pronunciation of this word is niche, but due to influences from other languages like French, niche has become more popular. In fact, it's the more common pronunciation in British English nowadays. I personally prefer niche because saying niche might make you sound artificial. But of course, both niche and niche are acceptable. All right, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you did, give it a thumbs up by hitting the like button. Also remember to subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button to get my latest lessons right here on YouTube. As always, happy learning, and I will see you in another lesson soon.